Hello once again viewers, yes it's Peter Elgar the old film bloke from Brentwood Essex in England. Another one of my gift cameras. This is not on loan, I can keep it. A kind gent bought me a box full of gear and in the bottom was a filthy brown case all falling to bits and inside was this filthy microflex. Anyway, it's not so filthy now because I've managed to clean it up. So I'm going to tell you all about what I've discovered about this wonderful camera. This is made in England, but they cheated a bit because they've got a German Prontor SVS shutter. But everything else is made in England. This is made by MPP Micro Precision Products of Kingston on Thames, who also made the Micro Cord series and the 4x5 Mark 8 which I had when I was a photographer at University College London. I had a lovely 4x5. Anyway, look at this. Now the trouble with this, it hasn't been looked after. Look at that. All the leather has started to peel off there. And when I tried in the focusing screen here, I thought, why is it so dark? And no wonder, there was about a sixteenth of an inch yellowish dust on top of the focusing screen which has got a lot of lines on it to help you with the composition the fold up magnifier and you can push that down and you get the direct vision viewfinder as you usually get with these cameras like that you can look through there but anyway I thought myself oh dear so there's four screws here one two three four minute little screws I undid those and this bit lifts out and there's two flaps inside and you can get to the mirror inside so that's what I did I cleaned out the mirror which also had a layer of dust and um, I managed to get to the back lens and then I've cleaned the front of the lenses with lens tissue and diluted isopropyl alcohol. I wiped over all the body with cloth and dilute isopropyl alcohol and it's looking a bit cleaner now. So what's the lens? This lens is quite famous. It's made by Taylor Hobson and it's called the Micronar. They first made them lenses what Ross Express Los Enzo made the lenses, they had some quality control problems. I, I found that with my 16 on 20 Ensign Selfix, that Ross Express wasn't as good as the cheaper version that I have now, the Ensign 3 Element lens. I had a dodgy Ross Express. So anyway, Taylor Hobson made these, and these are pin sharp, just as good as a the Rolly Flex or my Japanese, um, my, what do you call it, the Japanese, <laughs> I've forgotten the name of it. <laughs> now, this, it's a flex because it's got the winder here. The cord, like the rolly cord, doesn't have that lever wind. It has a knob wind, so they renamed it the flex. And then, when you load the camera, We'll see how it's similar to ordinary rollies, well, isn't it? With this catch here, they must have got around the patents. There, I'm going to put in a film because I have found if you're not careful, you can get some overlapping problems. So we'll see loading the film. Take that out there, put it in this side here twist it so that you can find the little hole oh. and um, after about half an hour you can find it yes there we are that snapped into place now this is actually a backing paper but it works just as well as a uh, film so we get it in there and then um, find that find the hole there we are now, 
It's not automatic load like a Rolly Rolly Flex, no. There's a little minute dot here which you have to line up the start mark. It's very difficult. I I couldn't find it first of all. They, they, were, they were a bit tight with their red paint. I take the glasses off so I can see better. Where's this little red? Where's this little dot? Oh, I can see it now. It's it's sort of hidden about there. So that is a signal dot you have to load the start mark to. So we'll line up. We'll stick that in there. Um, see if we can load it. Now you've got to press with your thumb to get get it going tight. So make certain the backing paper, when it's a real film, it is also tight by pressing with your thumb there. Keep it taut. Right now, watch for the star arrow. There it comes. You can you line it up with a little dot. You don't have to be absolutely accurate. You can go past it a fraction if you want, because there's always a bit of spare on the film. There, that's that's on the dot now, which is extremely difficult to see. As I say, they needed a bit more red paint. So then you close the back. Then make sure that's latched properly. Then you have to wind round until it stops. And it should stop at number one. Yes. Then you fold that back bit. You see, it doesn't go back. Anyway, I'll go back that way. Now, you can start photographing. Then you must wind it until it stops gently, like that. Then bring it back and put it in the little hole and it's on number two. This is the technique. You wind it until it stops, then bring it back, put it in there. If you don't do it like that, you can get uneven spacing and a little bit of jamming up. So that's going perfectly well now. Yes, I've got that technique off, off to pack. This is the control by which you can supposed to get double exposures by holding that down. And it didn't seem to work. Maybe this is maybe it's broken because I couldn't get it to work. But they do say that is the control for double exposure. But this is so old and broken this camera it didn't work here's your release which you put a cable release in now controls for the shutter and aperture are similar to Rolly Flex they're in here and you also have the EV system which I never use so in order to you turn this, this one here and that will turn both together because they're locked interlocked so that's 125th at f16 and you turn it which is a bit stiff and it gives you a 60th at f22 which is the same exposure now if you want to change the exposure you press in the button here and you twist this control here it needs lubrication but I don't think it's been serviced since the 1950s and I found it was extremely stiff. It takes a while to move. But that would change the aperture. It's going back now. See, it, 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 it is stiff. Shouldn't be as stiff as that, but there we are. I'm not going to take that apart. Now, I've changed the aperture to f8 now. If you want to change the shutter speed, you've got to move this one. So we change it to 300th of a second. There, it's quite stiff. Then, if you want F8, you've got to press that and you've got to turn this one back to F8 on the little line. So, it shouldn't be as stiff as that, but there we are. It's 1950s camera, which has never been serviced probably, but there we are. We now have on F8 a 300th F8 on the little red line. Now I didn't reckon the 300th was going to be accurate so I metered it for 200th. 
So here we have a reminder what type of film you've got in. It says colour here. And then we've got Schneider on Western Exposure Meter A speed. When I started in 1951, I used to use Shiner. Because nobody uses that now. We use the Western Speeds. It doesn't do anything. It's a reminder. You pull it up again. It's extremely stiff. It doesn't want to move. This is the focusing knob. And it racks in and out like that. Now minimum focus is not quite as close as a Rolly Flex. It goes to minimum three and a half feet minimum focus. And you have a depth of field scale here to help you with your calculations with depth of field. So if you've got it set to say 15 feet and you have it on F8, everything everything from say 11 feet to 20 feet, that side, should we be in acceptably sharp focus when in fact you focused on 15 feet? Acceptable is the word because only it's only accurate on the distance you focus. The other is acceptably sharp. The more you enlarge it, the more you won't see it so sharp. Oh, it has a removable back by these catches here. Now I've loaded the film now, so I shouldn't have done that. But you press these catches and you can lift the back off. Well, it takes very sharp pictures and now it's been cleaned up. It will work a treat. So we'll see if we can wind it round as I've shown you. That's on a 300th now. Now we wind it back to a slower shutter speed and we'll see what it sounds like. I have tried the delayed action but it is extremely stiff. There we are on a 30th now. That's a 30th. Because here is your lever for your flash synchronization and your delayed action. Now it's M synchronization for flash bulbs and X for electronic flash and D is for delayed action. But it's it's quite stiff. I'll, I'll give it a go. So you wind it first before you set that, then pull the lever, then press the shutter and we'll see if it works. Oh, I can't hear anything going. No, it's so, so stiff it didn't work. So better leave well alone and show you some photos. First of all, I did the black and white. And I used a roll of out of date Oro NP22 film from the huge stash my deceased great friend left me. And I processed it in FX15 formula, which I mix up myself. Now this is one I took to use a Bayonet 1 Rolleye orange filter. Because it also takes Bayonet 1 filters and Bayonet, Bayonet 1 lens hoods. Wonderful. So uh, that's the take with the orange filter and it, it's really sharp. All the brickworks are resolved. When they're going to finish that building, I don't know, it's been going on for years. Now this one's extremely poor weather, poor light. And it was F4. The gentleman's face is extremely sharp. I managed to focus it with that dim screen and it's accurately in focus. F4 on a 60th, so I managed to hold it steady. Here's another one with an orange filter and the brickwork is fantastically well resolved all round here on the enlargement you can see it under a six times magnifier all the little bricks are resolved. So how that lens 
perform for colour. Well, I had a roll of half-used Kodak GPY 400. God knows how old it was because the original packing was missing. But I rated it at 100 and processed it a bit longer in C41 and I got some colour snaps out of it. Amazing. Very old film. One of my test subjects, the yellow door of Travis Perkins, builder merchant. And then um, the brickwork there is well resolved. Then the balloon shop in the Onga Road, Brentwood. That's from across the road. Uh, the bricks are all resolved here. And the detail here is actually resolved. You can read the wording on the snowman. Under a magnifier, you can read that wording on the snowman. Fantastically good lens, I can't believe it. Then I went, took some, some autumn leaves. This was stocked down to f16. But the others, they were taken f5.6 and f4. This was the only one where I, I used a small aperture. So this was stocked down f16 to get depth of field as much as I could. Some autumn leaves and the shadows going across. So there we are. That's what I've discovered about the British made Microflex camera folks. And it takes Bainit 1 as accessories. Goes on a treat, look at that. See if we can put the lens hood on, yes, there we are. So I hope you enjoy this little diatribe. And if you look out for one yourself, hope your one is a bit cleaner than this one when I first got it. Thanks for viewing. If you want to support my channel expenses, film and paper, etc., you can click on the link buy me a coffee down below. And very merry thanks to those. Mr. Watson from Yorkshire kindly donated. And he is a great photographer. I watch him as well. Thank you. Bye bye for now.